Ironically, only at this point do I think multipliers start to matter. Today, we're going to look at what credit cards you should get at five different spend levels. We'll start at 500 per month and then work our way up to 100,000. Big favor before we dive in is to give this a thumbs up to help out the algorithm. And if you are new and you want to get more cash back or points, then consider subscribing. Starting with level one, we have low spend, so about 500 per month or less. This is going to be students if you live in a low cost living city or if you're thriftier. It's ages ago at this point, but way back when, I did live in a co-working space in Boston and also Providence, Rhode Island. At that point, I was trying to cut spend, and I think I was at about four or 500 per month. I'm pretty sure most of the food I ate came from free startup events, and it was a lot of pizza. The focus for this section is a bit of a weird one. It's the fact that multipliers don't really matter. The general best case for no annual feed cards is about 5% cash back. You could argue it up if you do aspirational travel, but for most people, 5% is a pretty good number. 500 a month times 5% is only $25 back. An extra 25 bucks doesn't hurt, but it also doesn't really change that much. The thing though is that for that spend, you might be able to get 150 to 200 back. There are a lot of cards out there that have an intro bonus of 150 to 200 for spending 500 in the first three months. These are no annual fee cards and it's pretty much their version of giving you a toaster or some other bonus for using their product and trying them out. In a lot of these cases, you're looking at 30 to 40% return on spend. It is only for the intro bonus bid, but there are a lot of cards that fall into this and that extra 200 might buy you two weeks. Here is also when you want to have a decent understanding of the metagame and the rules involved. For example, you generally want to get Chase and Capital One first because they can be more picky. In contrast, American Express is not that picky at the beginning, but if you are a low spender, then they might become very picky and might not give you any bonuses. If you want to get American Express cards, then go for it, but I would probably wait until later on when you have higher spend. With that said, four cards I would strongly consider here are the Chase Freedom Unlimited, the Chase Freedom Flex, Capital One Saver One, and also the City Custom Cash. No annual fee, great bonuses, and also strong multipliers. They're pretty much the best foundational cards out there. Whether you increase your spend or you stay at this level and focus on multipliers, they're going to stay around. For level two, we have $1,500 per month in spend. In terms of who this is, I would say that it's most average Americans. In terms of focus, I would say that this is a sweet spot for most credit card and points people in their journey. It allows you to play it pretty much any way and get a ton of value. I think for most people, your best bet is going to be bonus hunting. There's a ton of cards out there that could do 50 to 60,000 points for 4,000 in spend in the first three months. It is a lower return on spend, about 15% for cash, but you also have more travel upside. Travel also ends up being a pretty good option if you have tapped out all the other cash back cards. Here, I would focus on two things, good intro bonuses and optionality. If it's not a fit in year two, then you can downgrade it to no annual fee option. In terms of cards, it really depends on your focus. If you're not decided on whether you want cash back or points, then get something that works for both. Great picks here are going to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred and also the City Premier. These are the more popular options that have pretty reasonable annual fees and also great bonuses and downgrade paths. If you travel though, then there's a laundry list of cards. Pretty much every airline and hotel card can fall into this in some way. Some examples of this on the hotel ends would be the Chase Bomboy Boundless, Chase IHG Premier, and also the American Express Hilton Surpass. Lots of options and also bonuses on the airline side. Chase United Explorer, United Quest, American Airlines Platinum, Barclays JetBlue Plus, Delta Gold, Delta Platinum, tons of options. Most if not all of these cards are getting you about $500 in value for travel. The big draw for me is that you can actually travel without aggressively impacting your savings goals. It's not free, but it is heavily subsidized. There also are cards like the Capital One Venture X that look expensive, but might still fit into this. $395 annual fee, but $300 Capital One travel credit, and also 10,000 anniversary points that are worth at least 100 in travel. So pretty much breaking even, and then the other benefits, like lounge access, are the value on top. I think this is typically the spend stage where people start to see more value in their credit cards, especially if you are using points towards aspirational first and business class experiences or other trips that wouldn't be obtainable otherwise. You can save and invest and grow that pie, but it is difficult to spend $10,000 on a first class flight instead of just using 100,000 points. With that said, if you are someone that wants to learn about cards, whether these ones or pretty much any other cards out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebby.com, and also down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive and that the cards make sense for you, but otherwise it is a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. Level three is what I consider high spend, about 5,000 per month. This is going to be a lot of professionals in high cost living cities, so think FANG, Big Law, and Bulge Bracket Investment Banks. 
Even though you make a ton, a lot of these jobs force you to live in expensive cities. A lot of your paycheck can go to rent, and a lot of things like food and entertainment can be more expensive. Or maybe you're doing insanely well in a lower cost of living city. This is a stage where I would start to focus on multipliers because they start to add up. It's still a percentage, but the numbers are more consequential. Let's say 4x on 5,000 in spend is an extra 20,000 points every month. Especially if you are using that towards travel, that might be one-fifth of a first-class flight. You could pretty much do round trip first in a year. One of the great benefits here is that you probably don't need to min-max every category. In most cases, you're looking at restaurants and grocery stores, and that could be one card by itself, probably travel, and maybe gas. Even though you might have other expenses, they probably don't move the needle. Maybe utilities, but for the most part, your streaming is probably not consequential enough. Also, if you are traveling more, then you might want to focus on cards that have perks there. Cards here would include the Chase Sapphire Reserve, American Express Platinum, and American Express Gold. Reminder to get the gold card before the platinum card, given the new rules and how bonuses work. Also, I'd recommend checking Card Match to see if you are targeted for elevated offers. I'll put a blog post link down below, or you can Google Ask Savvy Card Match and it should pop up. Outside of those cards, you can also mix in other travel cards that we talked about for the last level. For example, let's say you skipped the City American Airlines card before because you weren't flying them domestically. It might still make sense if you are looking for aspirational travel. There also are a lot of other travel cards that might start to make more sense now. A great example of this is the American Express Hilton Aspire card. That gets you diamond status, you pretty much break even with the credits, and you get a free night every year, which is value on top. If anything, this is the sweet spot where I would start looking for what I consider keeper cards or free lunch cards. You probably are now in the position to travel a few times a year. A lot of people here don't mind spending $100 for an annual fee and then getting a free night that they could use at a hotel that would otherwise cost them $200 or $300. Pretty much paying X to get X plus Y value. Another reason to go for these cards is because at some point you are going to run out of intro bonuses and this kind of keeps the treadmill going. So for example, Chase World of Hyatt, IHG Premier, Bonvoy Boundless, Ritz-Carlton, American Express Hilton Aspire, and Bonvoy Brilliant. Airline cards might be a bit tougher outside of some keeper cards, like the Chase Southwest Priority. Otherwise, it is normal to get one or two cards to help you with free checked bags. To me, this is the most fun zone, but the one that probably looks the most insane to everyone else. For example, there are a lot of people that end up getting two or three Hilton Aspire cards in order to stack them for that free night. If you have a player two and you're both doing that, that might be four to six Aspire cards. For people that are spending $500 a month, the idea of paying $3,000 in annual fees from Hilton Aspire cards sounds insane. If you are traveling though, and it's either unlocking places that would otherwise not be possible or saving you money, then it makes sense. You're paying 550 annual fee times six, 3,300. You're getting 400 Hilton Resort credit, 2,400, and then also 1,200 in flight credits. So in total, you're paying 3,300 for 3,600 in credits, which is kind of a wash, and you're getting six free night awards. That could be six nights at the Waldorf Astoria Maldives that would otherwise run 2,500 per night. Another great option is skiing or snowboarding destinations that can also be equally expensive. For example, the Waldorf Astoria Park City is a great redemption. Alternatively, run the American Express Gold and set it and forget it. Focus on the promotion and the end of your bonus for work. Level four is very high spend, so think 10,000 to 25,000 per month. In terms of who this is, I think it really depends. A bit biased, but most people I know at this level run their own businesses. In that way, they might have some pretty expensive food bills, but it's part of business. For them, it's relationship management or relationship building, and it helps them close more deals. The focus here can be pretty varied. A lot of people just don't care, and they put it on the Amex Platinum card and call it a day. One notch up from that is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, so maximizing some categories, but not chasing everything. Ironically, the American Express Gold might be problematic if you do have a lot of spend at US supermarkets. I would not be surprised if there are some people out there that spend more than 25,000 a year at Irwan. Within this level, there are still points people. For the most part, it's figuring out where you spend the most money and making sure that you get value. There also are people that chase elite status with American, Delta, and the other airlines or hotel groups. We talk about that a bit more on the Ask Sebi Business channel. In terms of cards, common options would be the American Express Platinum and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. For people that travel a lot, you might also see some lounge cards like the Chase United Club. It's pretty much the coupon book strategy, you're buying the lounge pass anyways, credit card is an easier way to do that. You have the multiplier cards of the Chase Amazon and the Chase Inc. Preferred. For more advanced people that are in the credit card rabbit hole, they might also go for hotel cards. For example, the Hilton Surpass gets you a free night after spending 15k per year on the card. 
especially if you know how to time the upgrade and downgrade cycle for the Aspire cards, you can get additional knights and it kind of works out really well. If you play it optimally, those six cards might end up being 12 knights or 18 knights. For airline elite status chasing, City American Airlines Platinum, American Express Delta Reserve or Reserve Business, and also the Barclays JetBlue Plus, among other cards. Pretty wide range and just depends on your focus. For level 5, we have Ultra Spend, so 100k to 250k plus. The few people that I know in this position are running either cashback setups, so think the Capital One Spark Cash Plus, or they have the Chase Sapphire Reserve or JP Morgan Reserve. For the most part, either one and done or maybe two card setups. I also wouldn't be surprised if there are also people here that put all their spends on Platinum cards in order to try to get Centurion cards. A bit of a rabbit hole, but a fun one. It depends on where you live, but unless you live in a low cost of living city, you need to spend a pretty sizable amount of money. For the most part, they're targeting the 0.1% for that area. Even though there are a lot of articles online saying 200k in spend is enough, I don't think that's the case. If you look at data points, there's a ton of people that spend 300, 400, 500k, and they do not get the invite. In cities like New York, LA, or San Francisco, you're probably looking at about 2 million in spend. In that case, you are looking at spending 100 to 250k per month on the card. They also look at where you spend your money. They typically want to see nice restaurants, good brands, and also fancy travel. Think of the person that happily pays $2,000 for the Amman or the Four Seasons. And doesn't bat an eye dropping $5,600 on a sweater from Loro. Also probably buys a few Pateks and Vacherons every year. The business in Turin is even higher. 2-3 to three mil is generally not enough. In places like LA, you're looking at 5 to maybe even 10 million. At that level, multipliers don't matter as much, but people still care about points. For example, David Portnoy has the Centurion card and has 44 million American Express points. So yes, even rich people like points. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point, leave a credit card emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is what level are you on, and also what's your main setup? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, thumbs up, share this with a friend, consider subscribing, but otherwise hope you liked it. See you next time.